prayer in the Bible. Pr a look at the prayer in the Bible. A look at the physical act of prayer. Islam is not a new religion. Literally meaning submission to the will of God, Islam is the only religion which is not named after a people, a place, or an individual. It is the religion of all of the prophets including Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, to name a few. The Muslim practice of standing, bowing, kneeling, and prostrating in worship is not foreign to past traditions. While many Christians and Jews find images of Muslims in prayer to be peaceful or even awe-inspiring, some find the Muslim method of prayer to be odd. When Muslims pray, they do so in a manner taught by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the last prophet sent by God and the only prophet sent to all of humanity. His words, his actions, and the events of which he approved or disapproved have all been preserved in numerous volumes, called Adith. It is important to note that these volumes are kept separate from the revealed Word of God, the Quran. It is from the Ahadith that Muslims derive their model for how to live, love, work, raise children, eat, give charity, greet each other, pray, etc. The point, here, is that after having received the command from God to pray, Muslims look to the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to learn how to pray. Were Christians and Jews to look to the examples of the Prophets, peace be upon them all, given in the Torah and the Gospel, then they would find themselves praying like Muslims. Here's proof. Genesis 17 verses 1-4 And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram, and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me, and be thou perfect. 2 And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. 3 And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, For as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Deuteronomy 5 verses 6-9 I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of Egypt, from the house of bondage. 7 Thou shalt have none other gods before me. 8 Thou shalt not make thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. 9 Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them. The very fact that God is instructing people not to bow down to idols, means that bowing is a valid form of worship. Psalm 95 verse 6 O come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Note that both bowing and kneeling are mentioned in Psalm 95 verse 6, the very order in which Muslims perform them. Deuteronomy 9 verses 24 to 25 Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you. 25 Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and forty nights, as I fell down the first, because the Lord had said He would destroy you. Revelation 7 11 12 And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, 12 saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. Joshua 7 verses 6-7 And Joshua rent his clothes, and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. 7 And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would to God we had been content, and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. Numbers 16 20-22 And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, 21 Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. 22 And they fell upon their faces, and said, O God, the God of spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with the all of the congregation? Numbers 20 colon 6 And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Thus far, we have read that Moses, Joshua, Aaron, and Abraham, peace be upon them all, worshipped the one true God through prostration and bowing. The angels did the same. And in Matthew 26 verse 39 Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, also puts his face to the ground in humility before God. Matthew 26 verses 36-39 Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. 37 And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be very sorrowful and heavy. 38 Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death, tarry ye here, and watch with me. 39 And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless not as I will, but as thou wilt. We must realize that human beings chosen by God to bring God's message are the best of human beings. 
to not follow their lead is illogical and arrogant. Bow down and prostrate to God and ask for guidance. It is God, alone, who can guide us. And be steadfast in prayer, practice regular charity, and bow down your heads with those who bow down, Holy Quran 245. Ask for help in sacred and worldly affairs, with patience and prayer, which bring you close to Allah and allow you to reach Him, so that He will help you, protect you and take away your difficulties. Prayer is a hardship except for those who are humble to their Lord. Al-Baqarah, 45 Many first reactions to this information is that it is interesting, but not significant or important. Wow, I never realized that Jesus, peace be upon Him, prayed with His face on the ground, as Muslims do. That's interesting, but who cares? The important part of prayer comes from the heart, not the act of bowing. In one sense this is true. An important part of prayer is what comes from the heart, but that's not all. Islam, submission to God, is a way of life in all respects. As such, it does not divorce the physical act of submission from the submission of the heart. When Muslims pray, they do so in a manner taught by the prophets, peace be upon all of them. Prayer is an act of mind, body, and soul. Submission takes place in all of these realms. Prostration with the forehead on the earth the earlier prophets and their followers prostrated in prayer, they bowed with their faces touching the ground, Abraham, Genesis 17 verse 3, comma, Genesis 17 verse 17, Moses and Aaron, Exodus 34 verse 8, comma, Numbers 16, 22, Numbers 20 colon 6, Joshua, Joshua 5 verse 14, comma, Joshua 7 verse 6, Elijah, 1 Kings 18 verse 42, David, Psalm 22 colon 29, 1 Samuel 20 verse 41, after Solomon finished prayer, 2 Chronicles 7 colon 3, during the prayer of Ezra. Nehemiah 8 verse 6, the holy angels, Revelation 7 verse 11. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, never invited people to worship him instead of God or as God, or as Son of God. This law was stated very clearly in, Numbers 23 colon 19 God is not a man, that he should lie, neither the Son of man, that he should repent. God is not a man sad face 1 Samuel 15 verse 29, Hosea 11 verse 9. Jesus carefully followed and fulfilled this law, and bowed with his face touching the ground and prayed to Almighty God, Matthew 26 verse 39, comma, Mark 14 verse 35, the disciples of Jesus did the same. Matthew 17 verse 6. Christian's Way Christians kneel down in front of the cross, clasping their hands in prayer, they perform the sign of the cross by tracing a large cross from forehead to chest and then shoulder to shoulder. This performance can't be ascribed to Jesus. Christians do not bow with their faces touching the ground, they do not prostrate with their foreheads on the earth. Christians do not follow the same worshipping way of Jesus. Muslims Way Muslims prostrate in prayer, they bow with their faces touching the ground during their daily prayers. What is meant by prostrating a great deal in the hadith help me to do that for you by prostrating a great deal? The Noble Quran, 22 hours 77 minutes, 7 colon 206, 1315, comma, 17 colon 109, 1958, 25 colon 60, 96 colon 19, comma, 32 colon 15, 38 colon 24, 53 colon 62, comma, 76 colon 26. O you who have believed in Allah and have acted in accordance to the laws He laid down for you. Bow and prostrate to Him alone in your prayer, do good by way of charity and in joining family ties, and hope that you succeed in your objective and achieve salvation from the feared. Al-Hajj, 77 The angels who are with your Lord are never too proud to worship Him, glory be to Him. Rather, they devote themselves to worship with dedication, never tiring, glorifying Him day and night, and prostrating to Him. Al-Araf, 206 all that are in the heavens and on earth submit themselves in prostration to Allah alone. A believer and disbeliever are equal in this, except that a believer submits and prostrates to Him willingly. While a disbeliever unwillingly submits even though his natural disposition dictates that he should do so willingly. The shadow of every creation that has a shadow submits to Him at the beginning and at the end of the day. ARR 8, 15 And they fall on their faces, prostrating to Allah and crying out of His fear and listening to the Qur'an and contemplating its meanings increases them in submission to Allah and fearing Him. Al-Isra 109 Those who were mentioned in this surah, beginning with Zechariah and ending with Idris, peace be upon them, are the ones whom Allah blessed with prophethood. 
from the children of Adam, peace be upon him, and from the children of those whom I carried in the ark with Noah, peace be upon him. And from the children of Abraham and the children of Jacob, peace be upon them, and from those whom I blessed with guidance to Islam and whom I chose and made prophets. When they heard the verses of Allah being recited, they prostrated to Allah, weeping out of his fear. Miriam, 58 When it is said to the disbelievers, prostrate to the merciful, they say, we will not prostrate to the merciful. What is the merciful? We do not know or acknowledge him. Should we prostrate to what you tell us when we do not know him? His instruction to them to prostrate to him only puts them further away from having faith in Allah. al 60 It is not as this oppressor thinks, that he can cause any harm to you. So do not follow him in command or prohibition, rather, prostrate to Allah and draw closer to him through acts of obedience, because that is how you can draw closer to him. al 19 only those people believe in my verses revealed to my messenger who, when they are reminded of them prostrate to Allah glorifying him together with praising him. They are not arrogant from worshipping him nor prostrating to him in any condition. As Sajda, 15. Then David judged between them and addressed the claimant, saying, Your brother has wronged you when he asked you to add your you to his use. And many partners oppress one another by taking their rights and not being fair, except the believers who do good actions, for they are fair with their partners and do not wrong them but those attributed with that are few. And David, peace be upon him, was convinced that I only put him to test through this dispute, so he sought forgiveness from his Lord and prostrated to get close to him, and repented to him. Sad, 24. So prostrate to Allah alone, and dedicate your worship to him. Anajm, 62. And remember him by performing the two prayers of the night, the Maghrib and Isha prayers, together with performing Tahajjud after them. Allenson, 26. Is one who is obedient to Allah, spending the time at night in prostration to his Lord and standing for him. Fearing the punishment of the afterlife and hoping in the mercy of his Lord better or that disbeliever who worships Allah in hardship but disbelieves in him in ease and ascribes partners with him? O Messenger, say, are those who know what Allah has made obligatory upon them due to their understanding of Allah and those who do not know any of this equal? Only people of sound intelligence recognize the difference between the two. Az Zumer 9 Prostration the Ultimate Sajda or sujud in Arabic refers to prostration. Prostrating is something that happens in different cultures and religions. However as Muslims, we prostrate in an absolutely exclusive way. First of all, we prostrate to Allah only and nothing and no one else. Secondly, the position of sajda in which our forehead touches the earth is exclusively associated with the Muslim form of prayer. It's the climax of our prayer. Ibn al Qayyim described the sujud as the seeker of prayer, the greatest pillar in the seal of the ruku. He said all the other actions we did before it were just preludes. The Prophet said, the nearest a servant comes to his Lord is when he is prostrating himself, so make supplication, in this state. Al Bukhari. Subhanallah, when we're in the lowest position, we're closest to the one who is highest. Allahu Akbar. Benefiting from sujud. Now the question is this, do you benefit from your sujud? Each and every sajda is a treasure trove. Ibn Taymiyyah said that the souls of people are brought closer to Allah during prostration. It's the time to make dua and ask Allah for everything you want. The Virtues of Sujud The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, My ummah on that day will surely have bright faces because of sujud, and bright arms and feet because of ablution. Ahmad The sajda is so important that Satan hates us for it. It was narrated that when one of us recites a verse of sajda, prostration, and then falls down in prostration, Satan goes into seclusion and cries and says, Woe unto me, the son of Adam was commanded to prostrate, and he prostrated in paradise was entitled to him and I was commanded to prostrate, but I refused and am doomed to hell. Muslim Don't you want to be of the sajideen, the ones who prostrate? Physical effects, sujud is good for the brain. Being close to your Lord is the most beautiful virtue of sajda but did you know doing sujud also has an amazing impact on your body? When you go into the position of prostration, your whole body is in an active motion. When you rest your forehead on the ground while your hands are placed at the sides, it gives most of the body muscles exercise. Your hands are then stretched out in a way that the forearm and arm muscles bear the weight. Sajda is unique position because your brain, or head, becomes lower than the heart, so the blood gushes towards the brain. The brain receives more nourishment, which has a good effect upon memory, vision, hearing, concentration, psyche, and all other cognitive abilities. 
your neck muscles become stronger because they have to bear the load when the forehead touches the ground, hence, the neck muscles become stronger and it's less likely you get common neck pains. The same goes for your back. While going into sajda and getting up from it the back muscles contract actively and become stronger. Keep in mind that sujud is not meant to be an exercise, however there are a lot of medical advantages associated with it. Still, the best blessing is the peace of mind you get, knowing you're close to your most beloved. The Prostration of the Sun In the verse we read that whatever is in the heavens and the earth prostrates to Allah the Almighty. The sun, moon, stars, trees, and animals all prostrate to him. Ibn Taymiyyah said that the prostration of these created beings does not mean that they put their foreheads on the ground. So we as human beings prostrate in the manner that suits us, in the manner that is well known, on seven parts of the body. The sun prostrates in the manner that suits it. Abu Dar narrated, the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said when the sun had set, do you know where it went? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, it has gone to prostrate beneath the throne, then it asks for permission to rise, but soon it will prostrate and its prostration will not be accepted. And it will ask for permission to rise and that will not be granted to it, and it will be said to it, go back from where you came, and it will rise from the west. This is what Allah says, and the sun runs on its fixed course for a term, appointed. That is the decree of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. Quran 36,38, narrated by Al-Bakari, 3199. Quantity versus Quality So now we know we should take each chance we have to go into sujud. But what about the quality of our prostrations? What do we feel when we go into sujud? Don't lift your head off the floor until you get at least one subhana rabulala that comes from the heart, mind, tongue, and limbs. Zoom out, picture yourself like there's a camera over you that goes up and up and up and help yourself with feeling and becoming small in front of Allah Almighty. Ask for at least three things you want in each sajda. If Satan comes to you telling you that you're showing off if you make a long sujud, make it even longer. Eliminate the thought of time from your mind. Picture yourself making sujud in Makkah, or imagine every single believer making sujud on the last day. Realize that Allah the Almighty has the complete power and right to destroy you right then and there for the millions of times you've slipped, made mistakes, etc. Put yourself in the shoes of a Muslim prisoner. Picture yourself doing sujud in a small, dirty cell with four walls closing in on you. Do sujud in random places and vary as much as you can, as every piece of ground you've prostrated on will testify for you on the Day of Judgment. If you can't shed at least one tear in sujud or during prayer, then remember the Sunnah of Umar when he would pretend to cry if he couldn't. Imagine the Prophet, peace be upon him, making sujud. Do sujud al shakr the prostration of thankfulness. The Prophet prostrated frequently in response to a calamity or a blessing that came to him. Revive this forgotten Sunnah in your daily life. Let's end with a beautiful incident from the Sirah. Rabi Ibn Kabi, a companion of the Prophet said, I was with Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, one night and I brought him water and what he required. He said to me, Ask, anything you like. I said, I ask your company in paradise. He said, Anything else besides it? I said, That is all, that I require. He said, Then help me to achieve this for you by devoting yourself often to prostration. Muslim Sujud is the greatest thing a Muslim can do, it's the one thing Satan wouldn't do. O oh Allah, make us of the sajideen, make us increase our sujud, make our hearts present, elevate us through every sajda, and erase our sins. Amin. Source, understand Quran. On the virtues of prostrating to Allah the Almighty. Please know that prostration is the greatest of acts of worship performed to Allah the Almighty. Indeed he is the only one who is worthy of being prostrated to, for he is the creator and the owner of majesty and honor. Allah the Most Exalted enjoined upon His servants to prostrate to Him for says, So prostrate to Allah and worship, Him. In Najm, 62. So prostrate to Allah alone, and dedicate your worship to Him. In Najm, 62. In many places in the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty emphasizes the significance of prostrating to Him. For instance, the Almighty tells us in the story Suleiman, Solomon, about the hoopoo that said to Suleiman, and, so they do not prostrate to Allah. Who brings forth what is hidden within the heavens and the earth and knows what you conceal and what you declare Allah there is no deity except Him, Lord of the Great Throne. Enamel, 25-26 And, so they do not prostrate to Allah, who brings forth what is hidden within the heavens and the earth and knows what you conceal and what you declare. 
Satan has beautified for them their actions of idolatry and sins, so that they do not prostrate to Allah alone, who brings the rain which he has hidden in the skies and the plants in the earth. And he knows the actions you hide and those you make apparent, none of this being hidden from him. Allah, there is no deity except him, Lord of the Great Throne. Allah, there is no true God besides, Lord of the Great Throne. Enamel, 25-26 Before going down further on the standing of prostration, it is good to advise each other on its meaning. To prostrate is to be fully submitted and devoted to Allah and in full state of subservience to Him. Performing it, the worshipper would place the stateliest part of their body on the ground, the forehead falling to the ground while the heart and mind are humble in front of the most exalted. On this account, the Prophet said, I have been ordered to prostrate on seven bones i.e. on the forehead. He pointed towards his nose, both hands, both knees, and the toes of both feet. Undoubtedly, to Allah prostrates all creatures in ultimate position of humility and surrender. Allah the Almighty says, Do you not see that to Allah prostrates whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth and the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the trees, the moving creatures and many of the people? But upon many the punishment has been justified. And he whom Allah humiliates, for him there is no bestower of honor. Indeed, Allah does what he wills. al Hajj 18 O Messenger, do you not know that to Allah prostrate, out of obedience, the angels in the heavens and the believing humans and jinns on earth, and the sun, moon, stars in the sky, the mountains, trees, and creatures on earth, compliantly? And many humans prostrate to him out of obedience. But many refused to prostrate to him out of obedience, thus the punishment of Allah became established for them due to their disbelief. Whoever Allah decreased his grace and shame for, due to his disbelief, has nobody to honor him. Allah does what he wishes. There is nobody to compel him. al Hajj 18 In like manner, the angels also prostrate to Allah, the most sublime, in line with his orders, and in humbleness in front of his supremacy. The Almighty says, and to Allah prostrates whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth of creatures, and the angels, as well, and they are not arrogant. And Null, 49. It is to Allah alone that all creatures in the heavens and on earth prostrate. It is to Him alone that the angels prostrate. They are not too proud to worship Allah and obey Him. They, despite their constant worship and obedience, fear their Lord who is above them by His self. Dominance and authority and they carry out the acts of obedience that their Lord instructs them to. In Null, 49-50 In his book, Allah the Almighty has praised his Prophet Muhammad and his noble companions, may Allah be pleased with them, as being devoted to observing prostration, in prayer. He says, you see them bowing and prostrating, in prayer, seeking bounty from Allah and, his, pleasure. Their mark is on their faces from the trace of prostration. Al-Fath, 29 Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and his companions are strict against the combatant disbelievers and merciful, affectionate and friendly among themselves. O oh, onlooker! You will see them bowing and prostrating, seeking from Allah that he grace them with forgiveness, a generous reward and that he becomes pleased with them. Their mark is on their faces as a result of prostrating in obedience to Allah. That is how they have been described by the Torah, the book that was revealed to Moses, peace be upon him. As for their mention in the Gospel which was revealed to Jesus, it is that they are likened in their assisting one another in perfection like crops that have emerged as small, then strengthened and stood straight up, pleasing the farmers with their strength and perfection. It is so that the disbelievers are angered by the strength, steadfastness and perfection they see within them. And Allah has promised those of the companions who have faith in Him and do good deeds forgiveness for their sins they will not be taken to account over them. And a great reward from Himself i.e. Paradise. al -Fath. 29. The Most Exalted also describes those who prostrate to Him much as the servants of the Most Merciful, saying, Those who spend, part of, the night to their Lord prostrating and standing, in prayer. al 64. Those who spend the night prostrating on their foreheads and standing on their feet, praying to Allah. al 64. Elaborating on its status, Islam has attributed great standing and lofty rank to prostration. It reflects glorification to Allah, the exalted is He, and submission to His commands. The Almighty says, O you who have believed, bow and prostrate and worship your Lord and do good that you may succeed. Al-Hajj, 77 
O you who have believed in Allah and have acted in accordance to the laws He laid down for you. Bow and prostrate to Him alone in your prayer, do good by way of charity and in joining family ties, in hope that you succeed in your objective and achieve salvation from the feared. al Hajj 77 In the Holy Quran, Allah, the Most High, has celebrated the true believers amongst His servants who when the verses of the Most Merciful were recited to them. They fell in prostration and weeping. Maryam, 58 those who were mentioned in this surah, beginning with Zechariah and ending with Idris, peace be upon them, are the ones whom Allah blessed with prophethood. From the children of Adam, peace be upon him, and from the children of those whom I carried in the ark with Noah, peace be upon him. And from the children of Abraham and the children of Jacob, peace be upon them, and from those whom I blessed with guidance to Islam and whom I chose and made prophets. When they heard the verses of Allah being recited, they prostrated to Allah, weeping out of his fear. Maryam, 58 they do so in glorification of his verses, furthermore, the Most Exalted has made prostration as a sign of true faith for he says, only those believe in our verses who, when they are reminded by them, fall down in prostration and exalt, Allah, with praise of their Lord, and they are not arrogant. As Sajda, 15. Only those people believe in my verses revealed to my messenger who, when they are reminded of them prostrate to Allah glorifying him together with praising him. They are not arrogant from worshipping him nor prostrating to him in any condition. As Sajda, 15. Why? More to the point, prostration is one pillar of prayer that is performed more than other pillars and the greatest of them. In evidence of this, when the Prophet was once asked about the dearest of acts to Allah the Almighty, he said, You should prostrate more often. On the same matter, it was narrated that Abdullah ibn Masud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, The best amongst the acts of prayer are bowing and prostration. This is because prostration is a cause for removing sins as the Messenger of Allah said, No worshipper performs a prostration to Allah except that by it Allah will raise him in status one degree and erase a sin from him for it. Amongst the other virtues of prostration is that it is one of the greatest acts that are conducive to draw the believer nearer to their Lord. The Most Exalted says, But prostrate and draw near, to Allah. al alaq 19. It is not as this oppressor thinks, that he can cause any harm to you. So do not follow him in command or prohibition, rather, prostrate to Allah and draw closer to him through acts of obedience, because that is how you can draw closer to him. al alaq 19 The Prophet also said in this regard, the closest that a person can be to his Lord is when he is prostrating. Equally important. Prostration is an act during which supplications are liable to be answered since Allah. The Most High and Sublime knows what is inside the heart of His prostrating worshippers and listens to their earnest invocations. The Almighty says, and rely upon the exalted in might, the merciful, who sees you when you arise, and your movement among those who prostrate. Ashwara, 217-219 And place your reliance in all your affairs upon the Almighty who takes retribution from His enemies and is merciful to whoever repents to Him from them. The Being, may be glorified, who sees you when you stand towards prayer and he sees you changing from posture to posture among those who pray. Nothing is hidden from him, neither any action you undertake, nor anyone else undertakes. Ashwara, 217-219 This was further accentuated by our master Muhammad as he said, As for prostration, strive and supplication in it. for they are more likely to be answered. An illustration of this fact can also be found in the following ayah in which Allah the Almighty describes His true believers saying, You see them bowing and prostrating, in prayer, seeking bounty from Allah and, His, pleasure. Al-Fath, 29. That is to say, by prostrating to their Lord, they seek His favors. So, He shows mercy on them, respond to their supplication, and is pleased with them. O oh, who prostrate to Allah the Almighty, part of the guidance of the Prophet was that he used to prostrate for a long time when he prayed alone. On this account, Sayyida Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, The Prophet used to pray, and each of his prostrations lasted for a period enough for one of you to recite fifty verses. While prostrating, he also used to exalt his Lord, the Most High, plentifully and seek his forgiveness saying, Exalted is my Lord, the Most High. With this in mind, we seek Allah's favor to make us amongst those who prostrate to Allah the Almighty. May Allah guide us all to obey him and obey his messenger Muhammad and obey those he has commanded us to obey in line with his orders. O you who have believed, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority among you. Anissa, 59. 
please be aware that it was a tradition of the Messenger of Allah to prostrate while reciting certain verses of the Noble Quran. In this regard, Ibn Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, said, when the Prophet recited a surah that contained the prostration he would prostrate and we would do the same. Furthermore, when the Prophet prostrated for recitation of the Quran, he would say, I have prostrated my face to the one who created it, and made its hearing and vision through his ability and power. He would repeat it several times. More to the point, when a Muslim recites an ayah that contains prostration and he prostrates, Satan withdraws weeping, saying, Woe is me! The son of Adam was commanded to prostrate and he prostrated, and paradise will be his. I was commanded to prostrate and I refused, so I am doomed to hell. So, the regret within the heart of Satan was so great for refusing to prostrate himself to his Lord. Indeed, prostration is one of the greatest acts that lead the believer to be admitted to paradise and see their status raised by degrees so as to accompany the prophet therein. It is, truly, such a glorious rank and gracious company. An illustration of this can be seen in the following hadith. It was narrated that Rabia ibn Qab al-Islami, may Allah be pleased with him, said to the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, I want your company in paradise. The Prophet said, Is there anything else? Rabia said, That is all, what I wish. He said, Then help me to fulfill your wish by prostrating often. Thus, the Prophet advised him to do what Allah the Almighty has commanded us to do when he says, And we already know that your breast is constrained by what they say. So exalt, Allah, with praise of your Lord and be of those who prostrate to him. Al Hijr, 97 98. We know that your heart, O Messenger, is constrained by the rejection and mockery of you that emanates from them. So resort to Allah by declaring his transcendence from everything not appropriate for him, and by praising him with the attributes of his perfection. And be one of those who worship Allah and pray to him. In that there is a cure for the strain on your heart. Al Hijr, 97 98. Undoubtedly, while engaged in prostration, Allah the Almighty expands the chests of his true believers. As a result, their heart become assured, their souls tranquil and they will see their status raised in degrees.